Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'll be going through my corporate journey at PricewaterhouseCoopers, otherwise known as PwC, and why I decided to leave. Please keep in mind that these are just my experiences in one service line in one location and not representative of the firm at all. So a bit of a background, when I was studying accounting and financial management in university, I had to complete four four-month internships, or co-op terms as we call it, and there was such a big hype around landing a spot in audit at one of the big four, and for those not familiar, the big four are PwC, EY, KPMG, and Deloitte. I didn't know too much about the big four at that time or what audit really was, but I knew that they were international firms and eventually I wanted to move to England, or so I thought. Um, so I thought that working at a big four would provide me that international opportunity to transfer offices. Attending networking events and talking to all the reps at all the firms, I found that I just resonated with PwC employees a little bit more. So nonetheless, I applied to all of them, but I got into PwC for my first co-op term and I was so proud of myself because I would have never thought that someone so shy and quiet like me would have been able to network, ace the interviews, and lend a spot in audit just like everybody else in my class. So my first co-op term was in 2016 and usually the audit busy season runs from January to April because you're auditing the financial results of the previous year and the filing deadline is March 31st. So from January to March is super busy all the time. And obviously that's when the big four hire students like us because they need the most resources. I had only taken one course in university for audit and let me tell you, doing audit in the real world is nothing like what they teach you at school. And PwC does have a teach don't tell methodology or ideology they like to preach all the time, but sometimes you're so busy that there really isn't time to teach someone, you just need an answer or a directive on what to do and how to get it done in the least amount of time possible. I'm so grateful for the fact that PwC did hire a lot of people from my university, not only in my year but in the years above me, so that on my teams there's always somebody from my university a year or two older that had experience on that client. So it was easier for me to ask questions because I knew that they were in my shoes just last year or the year before. On my first client, I had a horrible, horrible manager. She would yell at us, belittle us, tell us how many hours to book, micromanage us. It was just such a horrible experience and I really second guessed my choice in choosing PwC but luckily it was just a two week client and the senior associate on that job actually lodged an HR complaint against that manager and got her removed from the firm so she's gone now but it was just such a experience that scarred me because being treated like that in the corporate world is not something that you think would happen to you so that was just one bad experience that happened right off the bat. My second client was so much more better. The hours were horrible, yes, but the team was so good because it was all students from my university. So it was just like we were completing a group project together. We were staying late, which sucked, but we got to order dinner, go for coffee runs, play Sporkle at 4 p.m. And that was just so much fun. My grandparents and parents were so shocked when I used to come home late at the beginning because they were like, are you sure you're working this late? Like, is that even legal? But when they saw how stressed and tired I was, they knew that there was no way I was out having fun with my friends. To be honest, the work-life balance during busy season is basically non-existent. Um, you're so tired during the week that on the weekends you just want to sleep and relax and not really do anything. Which is not a good way to live your life, but I mean with the free dinners, socials, free Ubers home, and the name of PwC on my resume, I decided to stay and keep coming back for my co-op terms. My second, third, and fourth co-op terms in 2017 and 2018 respectively were so, so much better because I finally knew a little bit more, so I was able to do my tasks faster and therefore go home faster. Uh, my team was also super, super sweet and I became close friends with a lot of them. My eight month co-op term in 2018 was probably the best one yet because my busy season was so much more manageable. I was working with a really close friend who was also my senior. So things were just so much fun and the hours weren't that bad. I could finally decide to do my own work whenever I wanted to. And I just felt like I had so much more autonomy and knowledge to execute in a more confident manner. I received an early promotion to senior associate in my last co-op term. And even though I was leading a bunch of jobs in the summer, Summers are usually much more chill than the busy season, so it was so manageable and I finally got to experience the perks of working downtown in the summer. It was a no-brainer to return back to PwC for full-time and truthfully, I just didn't want to interview again at all these different places because I was completing my master's degree, I was a little bit stressed and I just thought it would be better to climb the corporate ladder at one place rather than to start at the bottom at another place and have that same experience over again. As soon as I started full-time work, there was that overwhelming feeling of, wow, the next time I leave PwC, it'll either be because I retired or because I quit. There would be no internship ending situation. In my co-op days, I thought that getting to manager or partner would be doable because I had seen my dad work his way up from a bank teller all the way to director. So I thought that 
maybe with some hard work and some determination it could be possible for me as well. But slowly I started to realize that the work I was doing, I saw no value in it. We were auditing last year's results, we were auditing stuff that happened in the past, it wasn't forward looking and sometimes the assets of these companies are so large that even if the financial statements are off by a couple of millions of dollars, it's immaterial. So. What are you really getting comfort over? I just didn't really see any value in what I was doing anymore. As a full-time senior associate, you're suddenly expected to know everything as if you got some information downloaded into your brain onto the first day. It was so overwhelming. The responsibilities were just piling up and everybody had work to do so they were just reassigning it to everybody because the firm was understaffed. My first and only busy season as a full-time senior was horrible. I had no continuity on the client I was on. The hours were super long, but the only good part was that I had such a nice team of co-ops that made everything a little bit more manageable. However, I didn't enjoy the team environment at all. I'm a morning person and I enjoy getting into work early, getting my work done and leaving, but it seemed like on the team everybody was the opposite of me where they would come in late, kind of slack off during the day and then have to work late in the evening, which is totally fine if they're like that, but I just wasn't, so that meant I was the first one leaving every single day and after a while it kind of started to look bad even though I was getting my work done in the mornings when everybody wasn't there. Given that this was a high profile client for the firm, there was a lot of additional pressure on how everything was done and making sure that everything was done properly, including the way that the financial statements were stapled for the partners and managers. I wish I was kidding when I said that, but no, they preferred a particular way of stapling that I sometimes had to redo if I forgot. This level of perfection, double checking, triple checking emails and messages before I sent them was just draining and time consuming. I was constantly stressed and I actually developed anxiety just waiting and stressing about what would go wrong next. After this experience, I felt like I had less attachment to the firm. As a co-op, I would be so stressed about my work and if something was going wrong or if someone messaged me and I wasn't on my laptop ready to reply and do the work right away. But as a full-time, you realize that this is just audit, this is just numbers, you're not a brain surgeon, it's not like a death situation. So not to say I didn't get stressed, but my level of care and how much I was concerned diminished significantly because I knew that it would get done eventually and this is just audit and it's not life or death or rocket science. I also knew that there was no way I could stay until manager, let alone partner, as I once thought in my co-op days. Working 70 to 80 hours per week, doing work that I saw no value in, sitting so much, not getting exercise, being perpetually stressed, not getting enough sleep, these are all literally killers. And I didn't want to waste my 20s away in a corporate job just because I was too scared to leave. That's when COVID hit, so I decided to stay at PwC just a little bit longer just because the job market was pretty uncertain and unstable at that point. But I was on a really good client over the summer with my friends and it was so, so much fun. And I remember thinking to myself, this is what I got through busy season for. And it was just so much fun and I was reminded of my co-op days when we would just have so much fun at work. And although it was virtual, it was still so much fun. To avoid having another disastrous busy season in 2021, I decided to transfer internally to a new initiative at the firm, which I thought would be better, but I slowly realized that it wouldn't because it was still audit but I thought that at least my manager was super supportive so it would be an okay time. I wasn't actively looking for another job, I was just applying here and there without really much commitment or attachment, but a job landed on my lap and it sounded really interesting so I decided to interview. I loved the people, I loved the work that I would be doing, so I decided to apply and I got the job and then it came time to tell my manager and I knew her reaction wouldn't be that great because busy season was approaching and it's kind of taboo to leave right before busy season, but what I didn't expect was her reaction that followed next. She didn't even address it when I told her or congratulate me or thank me for my hard work and this kind of just solidified my decision to leave PwC because I know that there is high turnover, I know that people do leave and it's common but there's no need to be so salty or rude or unappreciative of all the work that I had done so far. I felt like I was being shunned unnecessarily for taking an opportunity that would allow me to live a better life, to get paid more and to just be happier as a person. And I thought that my manager and I were more than just, you know, co-workers, I thought we were friends, but I guess not, but that's okay. Now for my concluding thoughts. As I said in my introduction, these experiences, these thoughts are not representative of PwC or Big Four in general, these are just my experiences in audit in Toronto um, over the course of my corporate career so far. At the beginning, I enjoyed the corporate life. I loved saying I worked at PwC and bragging about working late hours was almost like a badge of honor. And most times it truly felt like I was just working with my friends on a big group project and getting paid for it. Slowly I realized that I didn't like the work I was doing, I saw no value in it, and the toxicity of the environment was getting to me. Managers, partners, or even people that you don't work with too often, they only message you when they want something and there's really no appreciation or 
genuine gratitude of what you've already done, they just want you to do more. I'm not saying I'm not a hard worker or that career development isn't important to me, but I also value having a life. Yes, the corporate world is kind of glamorous and the perks that they offer are pretty attractive, but you have to realize that they come at a cost and you have to see if that cost is worth it to you. So many of my friends left the firm as well and after that it just wasn't that fun and working with people that you enjoy is such a big part of having great work experience and I just knew that after they left I kind of didn't want to be there anymore either. I'm so grateful to have had this experience because I know that landing a job at the big four is something that a lot of people aspire to do and I think it kind of came pretty easy to me just because of the program I was in and that a lot of people did end up working at Big Four for their co-op terms. I, but I'm so proud of myself for having the strength to know that this wasn't for me and to move on because I think that when I become complacent, it's so easy to just stay. And yes, the work was easy. It, was, it wasn't work that was challenging me, so I could have done it very easily, but it was the whole environment, the vibes, the future progression. It's just something that didn't align for me. I remember crying so many times when I realized that I was in a situation where I saw no value in my work and I felt stuck and I remember asking myself, why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you putting yourself through this? I thought that it was part of the hustle that I would have to work in a job I was unhappy with, but I realized that no, I don't. I have the power to switch jobs and to get something that's better for me. I do know that I've learned so many valuable skills from my time at PwC. Now in my new job, I find myself thinking about how we did things at PwC or formatting my documents the same way and I'm so grateful to have that knowledge bank to draw from. I'm not one to regret things because I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. PwC gave me some of my closest friends, helped me develop so many skills including resiliency and efficiency. Yes, the sleepless nights, toxic stress, environment, all that stuff, it wasn't pleasant but it's okay, we made it through, I made it through, and now I'm in such a better spot in my life. Oh my god, this probably turned out so much longer than I was expecting, but thank you if you made it all the way to the end, sending you lots of love and light. And if you have any questions about PwC or that whole corporate life we're getting in, please let me know, I would be happy to answer them as well. Sending you lots of love and light, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!